Hey guys, it's Stephen Gates here from MyPLCTraining.com back with another video to help you get confident with PLCs and become a confident PLC programmer. This training will be about user-defined data types in Studio 5000 Logics Designer, um, also known as UDTs. Um, but before we get into that topic, just a quick reminder that if you want some structured training courses, support and access to Studio 5000 along with a uh, community of other electricians, technicians, and engineers. And check out our membership called My PLC Training Academy. And there should be a link below this video if you're interested. Okay, so let's talk about user-defined tags. This feature allows you to create bundled tags into one tag and then reference each of the bundled tags as members okay so um, we'll look at what that means specifically but you can basically um, create a bunch of different tag types put them all into one and then reference each one of those as needed so um, it may not sound that useful right now but I'll show you and I think you'll see that it's pretty cool so here we are in logics designer and the example we're going to run with here is let's say you have 10 machines that you need to automate with your PLC and each machine is identical. Let's say each has uh, 20 discrete inputs, two analog inputs, and uh, so yeah, we'll just say inputs only. 20 discrete inputs and two analog inputs. And we're bringing this into your Control Logics PLC. So you could create 22 separate tags per machine. Um, so that'd be a total of 220. Or you could create a UDT, a user-defined tag, and use it 10 times. So the typical way someone might do this is to create 22 tags per machine like this. Um, we'll just create these tags here on the fly. So say machine one start start button and we'll make this a boolean machine one copy and paste stop button now the copy and paste does make this process a lot less tedious um, machine one running okay, I did not spell stop right And then we'll make this a boolean as well. Ah, keep adding that T. Um, machine one stopped. This will be the last one I do. Stopped. And that is not a button. That is just a status input. Make this a boolean as well. And then we could we could have some other. Um, inputs as well like alarm shutdown motor rpm which let's do that one so machine one motor rpm this will be one of our analog inputs and these are these are kind of arbitrary but uh, certainly realistic something you could have with your machine in the real world uh, let's say there's a fluid level level percent Okay, and we'll make that a real as well. So, um, we've only done four bools and two reels, but you get the idea. We could add the other 16 bools. So, it can be done, and then, you know, copy and paste makes this easier. Like I said, if you do a copy and then paste, it's going to create the tags, um, duplicates of them, and it's going to add this one at the end. So then you could go through and change this to machine two. Get rid of that one at the end. Change this to machine two. And so on and so forth. Get all those to machine two. Copy them again. Change them to machine three, etc. So that's one way to do it. But there's a better way. And that is user-defined tags or user-defined data types. So um, 
let's create one here. So under data types, we have user defined, right click, choose new data type. And we will say, um, cool machine. Because I have no idea what machine would have all these inputs exactly. Um, but maybe some custom machine. So we'll say cool machine UDT. You don't need to put UDT in the name, but it can be helpful. So now what we do is add members to our UDT. So create, um, we can create a bunch of tags with this UDT later, but first let's add all the members. Okay. So we'll say start button. So we don't even need to indicate which machine this is, right? Just say start button, stop button. And we'll choose the data types in a second running stopped alarm shut down um, motor RPM and fluid level. Again, you can have a bunch more discrete inputs. We said 20 originally. I only came up with uh, six for now. Bool. And, and the more um, points you have per machine, the more useful this becomes, the more time it saves you. Bool. Bool. Then these are going to be real, so these are our analog inputs. And that's all we need. So you can put a description next to these if it's not clear what it does. Um, but you don't need to do that, so we'll hit apply and OK. So now what we can do is just create these tags um, using that as our data type. So we'll say motor or machine one. And then we look for our new user defined data type. So search for cool machine UDT. There it is. Okay. And then we'll do machine two. Cool machine UDT. That's fine. Machine. Machine three. Cool machine. Machine four. Cool. So you can see how quick it is to create this. And um, before we go on, let's just drill down into one of these machines. So machine one. There you go. You have a start button, stop button, running, stopped, alarm, shut down, motor, RPM, fluid level. Machine two. Drill down. You've got start button, stop button, running, stopped, alarm, shut down, motor, RPM, fluid level. Machine three. Same thing. So you can see, I did not have to individually create all these tags. I just had to create one tag um, called cool machine UDT and use that or one tag of the data type cool machine UDT. And it, it creates all those members for me. So that's where this really shines um, is when you have multiple machines or, or things that you're bringing in all the same data. And you, it doesn't have to be inputs. You could set it up for outputs. Um, you could set it up for internal use only. So maybe it doesn't have any connections to inputs and outputs directly, um, but you use it for some of your internal logic. And um, then if you, you know, have multiple machines or multiple projects that use multiple machines, then you can just keep reusing that UDT over and over. So we'll create all 10. Ten. Cool machine. All right. So then um, again, it's creating all those members for us automatically. So it's very neat um, too, because 
you don't end up with these big long tag names. Your, your tag names become shorter and then you just reference dot whichever uh, member that you need to reference. So let's go to program and uh, look at what it's like to reference these. So in a ladder logic program, we've got an XIC and an OTE. For our XIC, we can pick machine one, dot, and then um, you've got all the options. Dot start button comes up as your first option. Stop button running. Let's say running is the one we want. And then this could be, you know, whatever that is. Um, and then if you were going to reference one of the analog inputs, we could do like a compare instruction and trigger some sort of alarm. We'll just make a tag here for fun, HMI alarm. And then we'll say machine two dot um, motor RPM. If it gets above 2000 RPM, then we're going to trigger the HMI alarm. Okay, so there you go. Um, let's just quickly review those steps. First thing you create is a new Studio 5000 Logics Designer project. If you don't know how to do that, if you're not sure how I got here, we have a free blog post on that. Check that out on our blog. It may be linked below as well. Um, and then once you have the project created, expand your data types folder here. Go to user defined, right click. Um, step three is select new data type. Step four, give it a name, whatever you want. We did cool machine UDT. Test. And then number five, start adding members. Number one. And um, make sure you give it a data type. So whatever data type you want it to be. Um, and then continue adding members and then when you're done step six just hit OK so then you've got a new UDT that you can use it's really that simple if we go here now we should be able to see that test tag we should be able to see that one we just created called test test double click and now if we expand it, we have member one, which we created. And if we go in here and add more members, member two, click OK. It's going to give you that warning because you're changing um, something that's already been created. Click yes. Now when we expand it, there we have two members. So now that's another benefit to it. You can always add members later. All right, so um, for this example, you can see we've got our, I don't know if it's 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 times 10, 80 tags. If we had 20 discrete inputs like we originally talked, plus those two um, analog inputs, that's 22 per machine. 22 times 10 is 220. It can save you a lot of time. So there you have it. That is an introduction to UDTs and Studio 5000 Logics Designer. Hope that was helpful. Um, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you want more free PLC training content. Uh, we've got some good stuff coming up this year. Um, and also be sure to check out myplctraining.com for more free videos and articles on our blog and info on our membership, MyPLC Training Academy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.